So this video is about comparing ecosystems related to species interactions. The specific syllabus objective says use species interactions and they talk specifically about predation, competition, symbiosis and disease to compare ecosystems across spatial and temporal scales. So spatial of course is distance and temporal is time and specifically this time we're looking at comparing ecosystems by looking at what we might describe as biotic relationships so uh, that's what these are the interactions between species in terms of species interactions we can look at interactions that are within the same species so these are intra specific of course specific means species and intra means within and interspecific relationships some of these are beneficial to one or the other or both species when they interact so we'll unpack those as well. So the first one we've got here is predation. And that quite simply is when one species, the predator, kills and eats another species, the prey. So the predator benefits and the prey is um, negatively affected, is, is killed. Now, what's really important here in terms of ecosystems is that this um, interaction, species interaction between a predator and a prey uh, can influence the population of both the predator and the prey. Let's see what I mean. So this is what we call a predator-prey graph. And you can see that with the interaction between the predator and the prey, their population, so in other words, the abundance and distribution of both the predator and the prey species vary one influences the other so let's tell this story okay so we're going to talk about um, I guess this one here so um, populations of prey of prey species kind of go up and down so um, let's say the population starts being low because it's recovering after a period where the population has decreased by predation or uh, the population is decreased by insufficient food or disease, etc. When the conditions are right, their population increases very, very quickly. Now, when the prey population increases, then that's perfect opportunity for the predator population to increase as well because there's more food for the predator to eat. So some of these predators might be born or some of them might actually move into the area. So when we have an increase in the population of prey, we have an increase in the population of predators. Now, as the increased population of predators, as the population of predators increases, then that obviously is going to negatively impact on the population of prey. So that's going to decrease. And then we have the recovery in the same sort of cycle. So this is predation. One species kills another. The, the, uh, the interaction between the two species, uh, the interaction between the two species actually influences the abundance and distribution of both species. So the next relationship is called competition. And essentially we're talking about competition for resources between species and within species. Species might compete for food, water, shelter, space, so light, if we're talking about um, maybe an, an ecosystem, uh, a rainforest ecosystem where they're competing for light from the sun for photosynthesis, but there also might be competition from mates. So intraspecific um, competition might be competing for a mate. Interspecific competition might be uh, all of these, except for mate. Intraspecific competition could be for all of these. Now. Competition between species can also influence the distribution and abundance of species in an ecosystem. Let's have a look what I mean. So this orange barnacle species here, it's competing for real estate, um, rock to adhere to. It's competing with its fellow barnacles, both a different species and within the same species. So you see some of the, uh, the orange species are further up the, um, the rock wall. Why? Well, because they can. They have adaptations to allow them to move away or, or exist 
away from the rest of them. So why would they do that? Because there's less competition. They're not competing for the same real estate up here. But we'll see the majority of that species in the middle. And now down this way, we actually see this competition not only with between the orange species, but also competing with another species as well for real estate, for that rock wall to adhere to. So there's two very, very specific types of competition that we need to be aware of, and we're gonna look at it in more detail later. But first one's called competitive exclusion. And this is a principle of ecology that basically says no two species can occupy exactly the same ecological niche uh, at the same time. So what's a niche? Well, a niche, and again, we're gonna talk about this in more detail, but a niche is basically an organism or a species' position and role within an ecosystem. Okay, so if we have a look at, this is the classic uh, experiment for competitive exclusion. First, these two um, graphs up here show what happens to the population of these two species of microorganisms when they're by themselves, the green and the purple. But have a look at it when they're growing together. You can see that the green species, uh, P. aurelia, continues to thrive. However, B. P. chordatum, population decreases or diminishes to the point where there's nothing left. So it's competitive exclusion. So Aurelia has outcompeted Chordatum such to uh, the point where Chordatum is, has been excluded. So this does happen in nature, but also we see this other gentler arrangement called resource partitioning, which is more about sharing. So you can see there's some um, representations here. This is one species by itself, it's able to uh, you know, eat the bugs all the way through this tree ecosystem. But then when it has to share with these red birds that tend to be a bit bigger and more dominant, well, the, the bent red birds will find the spot that they uh, prefer, uh, that they are best adapted to. And the, uh, these yellow birds can't compete as well for this middle area, so they kind of share the ecosystem by or share the resources, but kind of move to the edges. Now, so symbiosis is a big one. Symbiosis means close long-term relationships between two species. Really importantly, it's gotta be a long-term relationship. That's why predation isn't part of this. Long-term and close relationship between two species. We have a number of different examples, a number of different types of relationships. And we can classify them based on whether it's beneficial to the species, plus harmful to a species, negative, or zero, meaning um, no effect. So the first one is mutualism. This is when both species benefit. Uh, mutualism we might see with, say, a bird, a hummingbird, accessing the nectar in a flower. How is it beneficial to the flower? Well, distribution of pollen. How is it beneficial to the bird? Getting nectar for food. So mutualism is both beneficial. The next one is commensalism. Now both of these ancillisms, commensalism and amensalism, both have one species that is not affected. No effect, but with commensalism, the other species benefits, and with amensalism, the other species is harmed. So let's look at some examples of this. Commensalism, the classic example of commensalism is with the cattle egret. When, so the cows, oh, so the egrets live in the paddock with the cows. In the grass, there's bugs. As the cow walks around, the bugs get disturbed and they fly up into the air and the egrets eat the bugs. So the benefit, the, the, the egrets benefit from the relationship with the cow because the cow is able to disturb the, um, the cow's able to disturb the bugs so the egrets get something to eat. But the cow doesn't get any benefits and equally is not harmed by this relationship. So we call it commensalism. Now, amen, now amensalism is one, there's no effect, and the other is uh, the, spe the other species is actually harmed. A good example of this is, uh, this is 
penicillium, so this species here, penicillium, is um, antimicrobials, antibiotic, it kills. However, this penicillium fungus, it releases chemicals as part of metabolism, and uh, it, it, it just so happens that it uh, kills the bacteria. But the, um, the actual mold, the penicillium doesn't actually get any benefits from that interaction. Now the last one is parasitism, where we have a parasite and a host. A parasite is an organism that lives on or in another organism and gets a uh, benefit from it and causes harm to the host. So the species that lives on or in another organism is the parasite. The organism that it lives in is called the host. The one that it benefits is the parasite, the one that is harmed is the host. So an example of that might be head lice. Um, the, the organism is harmed by having uh, the parasite living on or in. Okay, now the other, in, quite interestingly, the other species interaction they've included here is disease. So we have to use species interactions related to disease to compare ecosystems. Now, because we're talking about species interactions, it's really important to remember that we're talking about infectious diseases. So we're not talking about genetic diseases or uh, other sorts of diseases. We're talking about infectious diseases because it's related to two species. Now, we could say, remember pathogens are the organisms that cause disease. Pathogens are parasitic. They live on or in another organism and they derive benefit from it, somewhere to live, something to eat, etc., protection, um, but they cause harm to the host. So they're parasitic. And again, it's density dependent. So what do I mean by density dependent? All right. So let's consider this as population dependent. So as the population increases, well, the population density increases. So unless they can spread out, it means if they're limited by the amount of real estate they've got, the more population, the closer packed it is. So that means that they're living closer together and some species, some diseases are able to spread more readily when populations are closer together. But of course, if disease, uh, when population gets high and then diseases start spreading, then it may well decrease the population. Okay, so there are a number of different species interactions that we can use to compare ecosystems.